Morning folks, Jeff from RV Don Aussies. No fancy intro, just me telling you who it is and what we're doing. All right, so we're at Lum's Pond up here still camping. We'll be uh, here for probably about four weeks. Uh, we're on week one. So I get up this morning and I say, eh, let me check out my battery levels and, you know, house and coach and, um, or well, house is coach, chassis and engine with the, uh, the other batteries. Ah, let me look at my black tank, gray tank, fresh water tank, because I keep a little water in there. And uh, I said, all right, let me see what's happening. So I go over to it. Of course, something breaks, right? It's an RV, right? Repair vehicle and read volumes information. So here we go. So I said, water pump turned on power. I hear the generator pump outside that's my prime and i go let me hit the monitor it's a cmp2 by beaver and nothing came up on the monitor my heart interface is working it's 13 volts less than 10 amp draw ac input right ac input and inverter is charge mode inverter or charge mode I don't tell you which one it's in all right so so it's off so i know it's in charge mode all right so what I've done, um, I've taken the liberty to undo a lot of stuff, get it out of the way, so make the troubleshooting flow easier for you. The lesson today is go between the yes and the no, and there's your problem. Where do you go between the yes and the no? You got to learn this. For y'all out there, uh, there was a good post on there about a lot of y'all want to take the, you know, RV tech course, well, if you ain't no good at electricity, troubleshooting, multiplex systems, DC, AC, you just, you're just a parts changer. And I hate to say that. I mean, you know, it is basics like fuses. It is basic like connectors. Are they tight? 120 connections, are they tight? That's the first thing you do. You run through your whole system. Hold on for a second. All right, so you got to learn that, right? And we can still check the basics. Now, I'm going to show you something here. Turn it on. All right. So I had to drop this out because that's where the uh, main voltage comes through for 12 volt through the roof. Goes all the way back to the panel back in the bedroom. Okay. Some coaches, it goes underneath the floor. This is a beaver. Now, remember, I came here and I told you, turn the panel on. Water pump circuit works, the start stop works. That's different 12 volts. So now I'm gonna see first if I got 12 volts there. And it's charging, so it should be around 13, right? Because it's on the inverter charger, which is a combination unit, the old 458 Xantrax. It's a hearth interface, which is the same darn thing. All right. All right, so we're at the main panel right now, the monitor panel. Okay, one, it does the generator start and stop and prime. Two, it does the water pump main control. And three, um, monitors, the, the tanks, gray, black. All right, so remember I tried to switch it on, didn't come on. So the first thing we're going to do is check power. Now, there's two types of ground. There's the circuit ground, the power and ground that go to the module. Then there's the physical ground, like the negative, the battery that ch holds to the whole chassis. So we're going to do this. We're going to check voltage. Here we go. Now, I use these leads here. They pierce, and they don't put a big hole in it, right? You can barely see that little needle right there. Let me see. Right there you go. Right? It's barely going in there, right? See it? All right, so we have a negative 11.53. That's because the positive multimeter lead is on the negative side of the circuit. Panel, ground. Right, let's see if we can see it up here. Easy. There you go, panel, ground. It's upside down. Oh, oh. well that fell off. Okay, so there you go. Well, we had voltage. Now I'll put you back on one scale. Now we'll put you on pause. Okay, 
So now you notice that there's no symbol, which means positive 11.55. Well, folks, might be a bad ground, right? All right, so we're going to find out. We're going to use a, another ground somewhere. All right, so I follow the wire out through. It goes behind this, behind this, behind this panel. This is where I ripped out all that old analog satellite KVW system. And it comes over to here, okay? Now, here's all your powers that feed, and here's your crown. Well, I was in here on another video ripping out all that cable stuff that I'm not going to need anymore, the analog. And I showed you that box, which kills the 120 volt, even if you're running the generator, to the TV so you don't drive down the road and watch it. All right, I call that dumb box. Are you uh, dumb enough to watch TV while you're driving? Well, we know what happens. And I'm going to say it like it is. I might offend some of y'all. Oh, well. Anyway, so back to the lesson hand. Go between a yes and a no. So I checked here. Still got 11 some volts. So I'll do it for you. Let's see. Put you on pause. All right, so the wire comes all the way down top of this roof into my 12 volt automotive side. All right, this has two separate 12 volt feeds and it splits. So I had to figure out the hard way, and I've had this coach for years, what was wrong. All right, so the two are empty, which means you have leftover circuits you can build up on, right? Extra stuff, right? And the max these handle is 30 amp this board. So now, now you got the power reel, then you had start, boost, TV power, rear camera. Well, let me put you on pause. That's this, the TV boost. All right, well, I was, I'm getting 11.4 volts because it ties right into those wires there. So I said, all right, maybe that's just drawing too many amps going bad. I got a digital type coming. It tells me how many channels and all, and I'm changing this box out. And I got a TV out in the bay, then I'm going to get a mo ride swing out system for. Here we go, back. All right, so now some of my fuses have a uh, telltale in them, okay? Like the little LED will light up. I said, well, none of them will lit up. That's pretty neat, right? I said, all right. So I'm gonna test now. Hold on, I'll put you on pause and get set up for testing. This is the ground. Of course, this is positive power. All right, so a lot of you, I've been telling you, buy different wires. This is a continuous, nice alligator, 20 amp alligator. So I have a continuous ground. I know it's a good ground because what I'm going to do is take this. I got to pop this off, right? Right there, my needle. Okay, my piercing. I'm going to go to each branch and test it. So I got 12.9, 13.2. Pierce that one, 13.3. Now, just gonna go down the fuses. I go, okay, 13.2. And I get down to this one that powers it, 11.55, I go, wow. And I go on each side. If you see the number of the fuse, each side has a little test port. Okay, so I go here, 13.24. You see, do you see a little red light coming on? Watch, see it? That's what it's supposed to do, 11.56, folks. There's your problem. No, you do not have 13 volts. No, you do not have 13 volts. Hold on now. Yes, you do. So you go between the yes and the no, and there's your problem, folks. I'm going to show you this fuse. They're supposed to light. Give me a 
indication of that you have an open circuit to diffuse blow. Let me see if I can get it for you. You see it? It's barely blown. Maybe I can put it on there. There you go, right there. Let me put you on pause and we get a light. All right, we're back. Barely blown, like barely, right? See it? Right there, like a little slot, maybe a uh, ten thousandths of an inch. But you see on top, see the little white block? That is a little LED. You saw the light come on. Let's turn it around and I'll show you. It says, Easy ID Fuse. Well, I guess that didn't work. Welcome to something. You keep adding stuff. All right, so there it was. Go between the yes and a no, and there's your problem. All right, so we had a bad 15 amp fuse. Now, I'm going to replace it, and we're going to go check it, right? So I've already done all this to make this an easier thing. Remember, go between a yes and a no. We put in the fuse. Oh, that one's barely numbered. I look at all fuses I put in, make sure they're good. I don't have to continuity test them. All right, here we go. I'm going to watch it when I stick it in, make sure. There you go. Let's go check it. the meter. We'll go to this one right here. Right. There we are. We got 13.29 volts. We're good to go. Let's go up front. I'll put you on pause real quick to shorten the length of the video. All right, here we go. You're around, put the panel up there, turn it on. The light come on, coach monitor panel, fresh water level 100%. Now, it's zero. Gray, 25. Uh, I've been in this thing, 100% black level, and it, trust me, it's probably full. Oh, I ain't dumped in a while. Gas, 97% propane. And battery voltage, 13.3. There you go. Pretty accurate, 13.4. All right, so there you go, folks. What's the motto? Test not guess. What you learned today, go between the yes and the no, folks. Come on now. You got to learn this. What two types of ground are there? There's a circuit ground. Then there's a... The chassis ground itself, the negative of the battery. Okay, we can talk about all kind of other stuff, but that is how these systems are set up. You have to verify both grounds. All right, and remember, I thought I created some of this problem because I tore out some of that old um, satellite cable stuff, the old analog stuff, and getting ready for the new digital stuff coming. So, thank you. Uh, safe travels, may your campfires burn bright. Till we meet again, where? Here on this YouTube channel. Give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Where else we're going to meet on the road? I'm going to blow my air horns. Probably piss somebody off. But anyway, uh, make them look at least. <laughs> the other one is at a filling station, right? Fuel outlet or depot, right? Getting gas or diesel. Come on over and see me. And where else we're going to meet? Probably at the garage and school. It's taking off, folks. I got uh, 11 members coming in December. Um, hopefully, a, a few of them want to do a video. All right. Some people don't like to be videoed. All right. So, you got to respect that. Um, I'm trying not to work on RV as much anymore because I retired and I'm 63. And after 50 some years of this, my body's paid like some of you out there. And where's the other place we're going to meet on the YouTube channel? already said that the website let's talk about that website that's www.rvdiagnostics.com everything that has to do with me is rv diagnostics all right now that's where i do one-on-one -on -one troubleshooting with you okay so please look it up go to the testimonial videos and see what people are saying all right thank you very much i'm out of here